Uh, Lady Governor Dominic Petilia will be speaking right before us now. He is currently serving on his first term as governor of Leyte. Prior to his election as governor, he was active in promoting the province as a new tourism and investment hub in the Philippines. And as governor, this is very important. One of his programs is to integrate disaster resiliency at the core of Leyte's provincial development plans. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause, please. Our Leyte governor, Governor Petilia. Thank you. Uh, the last time I met uh, Maria was in Pisca last year. Just I was a new governor. She was speaking very calmly as she did here, and very, uh, very, very convincingly. And when I spoke, I was shaking. Sana po hindi manyari ngayon. But anyway, uh, Mayor Alfred. Trumaldes, uh, Mayor in Tongyo Palang Alang, and everybody, a pleasant good morning to everybody. Uh, at around 7 a.m., November 8, 2013, Typhoon Haiyan, or locally known as Yolanda, made a landfall on the shores of the eye of the typhoon made a landfall at the shores of Tolosa Leyte. And then, just as it hit the landfall, uh, the wind started to slow down. You know, releasing perhaps billions of gallons of seawater it has sucked from the ocean. And the backwind of the uh, typhoon, the backwind of the eye, pushed those seawater northward, going to the next town of Tanawan, Palo, then Tacloban, and unto Samar, no? causing massive destructions along its path. It was so vicious that it was even, it was something that, you know, we cannot fight. No, wala kaming laban doon. So vicious and unmerciful. No, that despite the screams of prayer from the people, it still went on rampaging our beautiful land. I have heard stories also. No, marami din tayo narinig ng mga kwento. Uh, actually, what I have seen actually in my two eyes, no, I've seen naked people running right after the typhoon. No, alam mo, they were undressed by Yolanda sa lakas ng hangin. And then, ang katawan nila, ang, ang mukha nila were full of black, black uh, spots. Some of the spots were actually bleeding. I asked them, how did you get that? They said, it's coming from the rain, from the raindrops. No? So injury by a raindrops, that, that's first. No? So that's how, how strong the winds were. Uh, there was a family no? uh, in their home, seeking shelter in their home. And then the home was blown away together with them. They landed around 100 meters away into a rampaging river. All perished. No? And there was one barangay official in Palo. He saw his daughter and two nieces no? being crushed by a, by a trunk of a coconut tree that was being swept by the storm surge. No? So grabe talaga. But amidst the horror, amidst the brutality of Yolanda, we can learn the biggest lesson also no, from this event. The lesson that was taught to us 
no other than the people themselves. Katulad sa ating speaker kanina na karpintera. No? The, les the lesson of resiliency. The lesson of perseverance. The lesson of hope. No? We have learned that. We have seen that happen. No? But also, yung hope din naman can be induced. No? The rest of the world, when the rest of the world arrive in Leyte, I'm quite sure malaking bagay sa mga tao dito nung no, makita nila na nandito na lahat tumutulong. No, it was a big relief. No? So, uh, para sa amin, no, uh, the, before the typhoon, we have agreed to really first no, clear the roads after the typhoon. We have been seeing the pictures ng, ng Typhoon Pablo, the aftermath of Pablo. I personally seen the pictures. And by seeing the pictures, even before Yolanda, I already, na-trauma na ako. Wala pa ang bagyong Yolanda by just seeing those pictures. Knowing that something worse than that picture will happen here in Leyte. No? So we have agreed, no? clearing operations. We have to to clear the roads para makapasok ang ating mga ang ating mga relief, ang ating mga doctors, ang ating mga medicines para makapasok kaagad. No? Be before the typhoon, we have been talking, no? Later on, Mayor Sandy Javier will speak here also about that, no? We have been talking. Kaya ba natin itong i-clear? No? Should we wait for outside help, people from the outside, to bring their equipments and clear the roads. Should we wait? No? Pero, we have agreed that definitely after the, the typhoon, walang trabaho, walang klase. It means there will be 1.7 million detenues, <clears throat> not to mention the more than 450,000 Paklubanons and Orokmukanons doing nothing after the typhoon. Diba? So we have decided na mag-usap-usap tayo. Let's talk to our communities. Let's talk to our people, mga mayors. No? Magtulungan tayo. I-clear natin. No, one person can pick up one debris from the street. Malaking bagay na yun. No? It, it will create a big impact. Indeed, no, right after the typhoon, nag-start yung clearing. Diba? ba? Uh, siguro, I think, I, I've seen the first heavy equipment dumaan sa amin sa palo ng province. It was around mga 11, 11 o'clock in the morning, right after the typhoon. By the following day, Tacloban to Southern Leyte was already possible. And four days after the typhoon, all roads going to all towns and cities in the island of Leyte was already, were already passable. No? That paved the way for the arrival of everybody. And that also, the arrival of everyone from the rest of the world, that also paved the way to spark hope dito sa mga tao natin. No? And then, because of that, we were able to get supplies. I, re I remember, I signed a promissory note no, to, to NFA Maasin no, for 20,000 sacks of rice. No, naidala namin kaagad yun. And by the, by, uh, I think it was on early on the fifth day, no, madilim pa, didistribute na, ni-ration na namin yun sa mga tao. Pag-ration namin sa mga tao, then the entire day, that day, announce kami ng announce ng curfew, and by 7 o'clock, naglagay kami ng checkpoint dito sa Palo. No, actually, pati sa mga sa Tanawan, no, ang mga lalo na mga heavily affected towns. And then, beginning that night, I couldn't believe na tinamaan kami ng Yolanda. Ang tahimik ng kalsada. No, ang tahimik. No, may mga nagluluting that day. No, ang daming tao sa kalsada. Ang hirap, no, ang hirap pag may ganyan. But on that night, that was the night na nag-start na nagkaroon ng peace. And after that, no, sunod-sunod na. 
No, we talk to our businessmen. Una doon sa sa gas station sa harapan ng operation center namin sa Palo, we talk to them. Hey, mag-open na kayo. And we will assure you, kausap namin yung mga taga-Petron na dito sa Tacloban, sa Dipo, they, they have assured that they will supply. No, they will load every day. No, hindi kayo maubusan ng supply. Then they open. And then ang butika. No, that this was, this happened on the fifth, sixth day. No, then binuksan namin, pinabuksan namin yung butika. Yung palengke, yung hardware, yung grocery, one by one. And then, nung makita ng ibang businessmen na nabukas na iba, sunod-sunod na sila nagbukas. Now, what was the importance of that? Imagine if you have a, a, an ill parent, no? meron kang mother na may sakit. No? You, need, uh, you, you need medicine for her maintenance. And then, there was no open drugstore around. And you do not know when that drugstore, the first drugstore will open. You will really panic. Diba? You will really panic kung ganun. So what will you do kung magpanic ka? Maghahanap ka ng drugstore pag kukuhaan mo ng na paglulutingin mo. Parang ganun. No? So but since the drugstore opened, it contributed to the spark of hope sa mga tao na kumalma tayo. No? So despite of the damage, no, ang people of Leyte started right away to pick themselves up. Tinulungan nila ang mga neighbors, pick their neighbors up. They started to rebuild their homes. Imagine, imagine, imagine 180,000, more than 180,000 damage in Leyte. Sa Leyte pa lang yun, wala pa sa Kinala Mayor, sa Tacloban, and sa Ormok. How can 3,000 employees of the capital fix that? Eh, mga accountant pa to. No? Eh, mabuti, mayroon tayong karpintera. No? So, may, may accountant, may doctor sa capital. So, hindi pa lahat yan. No? How can you fix 187,000? And sa atin, because of the sparks of hope that came sa mga tao, people themselves no, started to rebuild their homes out of the rubbles. No? Galing sa rubbles. Then later on, nagdumating ang mga supplies galing sa ating mga NGOs, galing sa ating uh, national government, nagdatingan. Then, no, naka-improve pa tayo sa mga bahay. No? Now, because of that lesson, ladies and gentlemen, the province is now embarking on building more resiliency. No? And to do that, no, and to do that, there are many things that we are going to do, no? Ang iba sinimulan na natin. To do that, to build resiliency, we have to have a very strong people. No? Well nourished. So we have a nutrition program. We have our health programs. No? And of course, to build resiliency, people should be equipped with skills. No? So we have to build on education also. And to build on resiliency, eventually, no, with nutrition, with health, with education, they will have jobs. They will work. They will earn. No? And also, to secure that resiliency, we need law and order. Mabuti nandito ang ating mga military. No? And most especially, we have to protect ourselves again from such a typhoon, no? Yung malalakas na typhoon by protecting our environment. In fact, by re reversing, kung pwede lang. Kung if we can just reverse it just from late, no? I-reverse natin yung climate change. That will really be a big help on our resiliency. Now, Parang ambitious, ano? No? Parang, it's too, um, siguro ambitious. For example, we want to plant a million trees within one year. Okay? That's ambitious. Lalo na yung mga indigenous trees dito sa Leyte, no? Na malakas magkumain ng carbon. At saka malakas din mag-produce mag ng oxygen. I think, kung damihan natin ng ganon, baka ang 
baka ang mga susunod sa Yolanda matakot pumunta dito sa Leyte if our environment cools down because of oxygen. Diba? Siguro mga theory na lang namin to. Hindi naman ako scientist. No? And then, uh, it sounds ambitious. And then, because of that program also sa resiliency natin, we want to take away poverty. No? The poorest of the poor to help them. No? By time limit daw. Mabuti na lang hindi ko sinulat yung speech ko kasi lalagpas na lang ako. But one thing I can say, no? one thing I can say, Meron tayong, we have, no, last week, I know, I know a lot of you do not know, Faisa Linton. No? She is a 14-year-old scholar at the latest sports academy. No? Victim din yan and survivor din yan ng Yolanda kasi natamaan sila dyan. No? She is from Batagoob. Last week, muntik na siyang hindi makapunta, but last week, she won the bronze medal sa Asian uh, Asian Youth Competition doon sa Qatar, sa Doha, Qatar. She won. Against youth who just competed in the World Youth Olympics. No, itong mga bata na to, these are future Olympians. She joined and she competed and she won the bronze next to China and Vietnam. A few years back, sasabihin natin, that's impossible. But it has already happened. No? So no matter how ambitious we are right now, no, no matter how formidable the opponent is, uh, ang masasabi ko lang, uh, you have heard from the man of La Mancha, no? no? Dati, sa World War II, we beat the enemies in World War II. Now we are trying to beat an unbeatable opponent, an unbeatable foe. But I think still we can fight. We can achieve the impossible dream together. Salamat po.